Hey guys, throat's a little weird today, so it's going to sound different. Got a kind of a something in my in my nose that's infected, and you know, just kind of the sick thing. And I guess it's migrated down into my throat. Uh, going to be using the milk steak formulation of the Puzzle 2019 soap from Declaration Grooming. Uh, I'm in the contest to try to guess what the notes are for that one and I have the same aftershave product I like that he sent that and I'm guessing maybe he's starting to send a lot of his aftershaves with a little menthol vial separate from the bottle of aftershave and so you can choose to add it or not and I love that because I'm not a menthol fan the blade for today is Pole Silver. Now I call it Pole Silver. Um, Paul Silver. Maybe that's really how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. Uh, this guy has 21 uses. I hit 220 uses on my Nasset yesterday. And so I'm going to pause. I like to do a, a row of 10 and then kind of step back to other razors and just enjoy the variety there and so we'll pause for a little bit and enjoy the mamba this is the og mamba the 53 gap i believe it is there's a 70 gap out that has come out that came out last year this is the original gap it's a mild razor from razor rock it's stainless steel and this handle i believe is titanium and there's the pole silver. Pole silver doesn't actually say pole silver on the blade. It says that super iridium on it. People say the Wizomets are comparable to pole silver because right now pole silvers are a little expensive to buy. There's always rumors going around with pole silver that they've discontinued them. How that? How much truth there is to that? I I don't know. The brush we're going to use today is this little Samog 1438. Let me shake him out for you. Samog 1438 bore brush. We're just putting some uses on him. He's been soaking for a couple hours to help to try to catch him up to the rest of my bore brushes. He uses the extra grade hair from Samog and it's a little bit more firm and so this guy has more backbone than all my other Samogs and the tips are starting to uh, split but it's already fairly soft and, and not that many tips have split and so I'm going to enjoy using this guy I'm pretty sure for a very long time I believe then we are ready to put some use on this puzzle soap. Throw a little water on my face. About 24 hours is the amount of growth we're dealing with. So I'm gonna take the sopping wet brush. Now if you wanna leave some water in there, do that. Try it out. Then maybe you have to add less later. Give it a shot. It might be a good shortcut for you. All right. Used this yesterday, so this is a, uh, it's not a soap that's been sitting for a year. Sometimes that means 10 seconds less load time, you know, something like that. Uh, let us load for 30 seconds, and I'll start right it while I thought I started right at 20 but then that looks like maybe my phone is having some memory issues and th so maybe I actually started at about 24 so we'll just go to 54 then just just in case my phone is a little bit on the old side but it records generally pretty good videos And there we go. Should be about a 30 second load. 
um, it's kind of it is a definitely a brownish soap as you saw, but the uh, lather, the early early part of the lather there is a very light brown. Rinsing off the threads here, shaking out the water is what I do. You don't have to. So I'll take my Quintero lather bowl. It's a 3D printed bowl. If you want to do that yourself, you can look at the link on my video description to get to those files and print it yourself if you have a 3D printer or access to one. This milk steak base by Declaration Grooming is a terrific soap base. It's getting a lot of accolades in certain areas of the internet and I, I think those are pretty justified. It's easy to lather up, but to tell you the truth, I don't really find very many soaps hard to lather up. At least very many good soaps. But it's um, nice to be wet and creamy and slick all at the same time. You can get this soap there pretty pretty easy. I may be using a little bit more of him. I may be using him up more quickly than like say a sterling or a chiseled face. Both of those soaps I did some measurements and look like a tub of those. Each of those guys is going to last me a little over a year or almost a year. Sterling, I believe, was over a month over a year, and then maybe Chiseled Face was 11 months. I, I can't remember. So that's pretty wild. Now I put two teaspoons in the lather already. Three teaspoons may be all I need for a 30 second load. So we'll, we'll put in the three and see how everything looks. And the. Um, this soap base has a wonderful elastic quality to it. It's a kind of a lower structure soap and so it's not it doesn't puff up and get airy and foamy. And so it stays low and elastic and man I had some nice long peaks that wouldn't support their own weight last time. <coughs> if I ever get a sore throat there's a period where my voice gets all gravelly and I sound like Barry White pretty funny and this lather right now just looks tremendous so let's look at that See how stringy that was? What a lot! Yeah, look how easily that the shape changed when I gave the brush just a little bit of a wiggle. So I may not need to add any more water. One tip that I think is kind of important: try mixing your lather for a minute longer than usual. When you think you've got it right, maybe you do. But just mix it for just a touch longer if, if you've got the time if you're the kind of shaver that's shaving in the morning and things are rushed then don't worry about it you know but if you've got the time mix a little bit longer you may find your lather is you know improves to a noticeable amount just by mixing another minute longer I know that Williams is in particular a soap that you have to mix it the right amount of time, meaning a long time. And so I don't think it's all that great of a morning soap, you know, for guys who need quickness and speed. But if you do have time to mix it up, then you're rewarded with a slickness that competes with this stuff, competes with the best bases out there. It really does. The slickness does. Creamy. Oh. 
It doesn't have any aftershave properties, moisturizing of the face, that sort of thing. But I don't care about that. That's why God made bulbs, you know? All right. So this lather. Now, some lathers that look like this. Do you see all those features? It's... Um, that often is a sign that your lather is too dry if it's holding such weird features that way um, when it looks more like a big thing of melted marshmallow soup there are some soaps that's what you need to head for this soap is a little different all right throw a little water in my face and we'll lather up This little bore brush, nice soft tips. It's not scratchy at all by now. The handle is small, so it makes you work a little bit more to whip up the lather in the bowl. So it might be a good travel brush for that reason. Gives you some a nice scrub feel on your face. I guess if you were shaving with something aggressive that made your skin a little on the tender side, excessive use of this brush might give you maybe a little brush burn, but that might be hard to achieve. Now this looks a little too wet. I'm sorry, a little too dry. See, I've got some clumping down here. So let's add a few drops of water. And then I turn my head over so that the water doesn't leak out near the handle, but gravity pulls it back to the tips. And then just watch what your lather on your face and on your brush turns into when you do that. Does it get better? Does it start to multiply? Does it change from feeling a little pasty to creamy? If that second, if that ladder ever happens, then you know you're on the right track. Yeah, I needed to add a little bit to this. It's a little more creamy on that side of the world there. So let's add some more over here. Especially when you start adding water and then you can you can see more lather start to increase around the outside of your brush as you're working that in. Then you know you're on the right track. There was some concentrate in your brush that needed some water and the resulting answer is more lather, slicker lather. So I put in three teaspoons, but I've added another half teaspoon, but drop by drop here. And that's one of the reasons why I like this syringe. Not so that I can only add a certain amount of water, but so that I can know how much I've added when I'm done. This brush. Terrific little guy. Good example of good backbone, soft tips, and it's it's a bore brush. Super cheap. 
tiny handle. So I imagine rehoming this knot in something else later. All right, well, it looks like I probably need to add that to the lather, and I will. And I'm going to refill the syringe again. I'm going to go ahead and add just a half a teaspoon more to the lather bowl. And uh, I'm going to let this sit on my face for a second while I integrate this. So that 30 second load needed at least four teaspoons instead of three and a half of water added to it. This handle is very slippery. I'm having to use more fingers than usual to get a good grip. But if you're a face lather, that's not going to be an issue for you. So what do you do when this happens? Well, I hold the brush up and I put it under the stream of water that will only touch the handle. And I rotate the brush under that stream. And now it's a lot easier to hold. Feels good on my face, nice and slick. All right, folks. I've been using that Nasset for 15 shaves in a row, two weeks straight. So it is refreshing to get into something else. And this feels super smooth compared to what I'm used to. And some people might consider 21 uses on a pole silver to be old. Well, I guess it's possible that their skin can't handle it. But it's also a thing of technique. Good technique, a light touch, good angles, the right handle, angle, are all parts of technique. A nice wet lather can help you to get a lot of miles from your razor. And that's why some people marathon blades, some people call it hypermiling. That's why some people do it to improve their technique, not necessarily to be all skimpy and cheap. I mean, blades are really kind of inexpensive anyway, right? So it's, I'm not trying to save, because it can make a NASA go 220 uses. I mean, it was probably like an eight cent blade in the first place. So I'm not trying to, you know, stretch that eight cents. All right, let me rinse. If you ever go to a rinse and you feel on your face the slickness, but it's a pasty, thick slickness, that's a clue that your lather probably needs more water. You can probably get a better performing lather out of that. Just add some more water to it. Now maybe you like a, a thick lather, a, a dense, kind of dry lather. You know, and if that gives you good shaves, then go for it. Ordered this brush kind of on a whim. This is the, like I said, extra grade bristles that Samogue has. And I wanted a representation of that grade. The 620 is a very popular brush in that grade. It has that acrylic handle that's kind of small. It's a pain in the rear for bowl latherers because that, just like you saw today, that soap gets up around your fingers and gets on that handle. And man, you've got to really hold it tight to be able to, you know, use it cross grain now. And so I didn't want to get the 620, but it is well regarded by a lot of people. So 
some pretty ardent fans and if it feels anything like this I can see why stand it it stands out pretty these extra great hairs stand out amongst the Samogues because most of the other hair grades are a lot more supple now if the tips on this one weren't soft I wouldn't have it I wouldn't be using it but already they're very comfortable the other, some of the other brushes may have better tips but these are still really soft and then when you have that combination of uh, medium backbone maybe slightly above back, medium backbone meaning the stiffness of the bristles the length of the bristles being kind of stiff and you combine that with really soft tips and the tips on this brush are going to get even softer it's going to get even better and better and better how do they get soft you might ask they split over time all right third pass they split over time and so that one tip, let's say there's 2,000 brush bristles here. If each one of them splits into two, you've doubled your, your tips. That's going to increase your softness. You've also halved the width of each tip. So that's how your softness is going to get increased when the tips split some of some brushes like uh, some of the unbleached omegas could take years to split fully i don't know how long the samogs are going to take they've already gotten most of mine get soft and very usable within just two weeks of uses and that's with no break-in acceleration methods if you don't know about those some people like to soak their brushes in water for a day, for a few hours. You know, it varies by person to person. There's an old Italian barber video out there where he talks about like putting them in the fridge for three days. Once or twice or three times a day, you go, uh, go in and get them and uh, strop it on a towel to kind of dry it and then put them back in the fridge put it back in the fridge man this is a nice smooth razor feels great really nice comfort nice balance having this as a titanium handle i think makes a perfect balance for this for this razor balance point about right here it's not, it is shiny um, and slippery. It may be if I got soap on here, but just water, it's fine. But the uh, old barber said you put it, you take it out every once in a while, work it on a towel for a little bit, and then you put it back in the fridge, do that for three days, and then the brush is ready to go and ready to be used. Well, that might really work for him. Because he is not concerned about keeping that brush for a long time like I'm concerned about my bore brushes. Even though they're uh, cheap, I kinda, you kind of get a relationship with them as you train them up and watch them grow. and It becomes something you've kind of created. I think I did three passes, but I just kind of feel like doing another one. Enjoying the shave. This soap. So that barber is not concerned about longevity of the brush, and so maybe the fridge method could put a little extra strain and cause it to split in ways that aren't as healthy for the tips. I could be totally wrong. It may be the best thing. I don't know. I wonder if we'll ever know. But I also know that
he's concerned about getting a brush usable for his business quickly. And that's not my same goal. And so his priorities might make him do different things based on his priority. But just as to say there are break-in techniques and especially with an Omega or I've got a Sterling bore that is also looking like it's going to be a while before it breaks in and becomes really soft. I might be interested in like, an accelerated break-in like that. Maybe if I get to 60 uses or something like that and it still feels like, hey, I want, I want some tips to split. Then maybe I'd think about doing something like that. All right, so I'm going to rinse and take a look at my shave. I think I just did four passes. Other break-in methods that I've read about include uh, something that I've done with the borathon that I have, those uh, seven or eight brushes, bores that I'm kind of raising up together. I use each one in turn so I can watch how they differ and grow. I'll soak them just for an hour or two before each shave, kind of like what I did today with this little guy. Um, some people just soak them in the fridge overnight, and that's enough to maybe cause them to uh, be a little bit easier to use. I've heard of um, getting the brush really wet and then taking a blow dryer to the tips to accelerate the splitting process. I've heard about uh, using almost boiling water taking your uh, brush while not having lather on it of course but uh, have it have it in normal water and then and then have in your container of almost boiling water and just dip the tips in for a few minutes um, or watch what happens and then you may take it out earlier uh, I, but again those sound pretty extreme all the samogs I've had and the zeniths and the uh, the one died uh, Omega that I've got, the 80266, all of them just didn't require very much. And inside of two weeks, sometimes just one week of normal use, they, they're they great. So I tend to go the safe route in many cases. So that's kind of the way I might hit. But I just wanted to let you know about some of the different bore breaking uh, shortcuts that there are. The I do have a weeper. Yep, it's right there. It's going, it's bleeding very slowly. I felt it with the cool water rinse that I was getting. It'll heal up very quickly. And or since it's right on a fold, I'm guessing I just uh, was a little careless and didn't lift my chin enough or just gently lower my uh, skin enough to keep it tight. And it just got caught up in the razor. So that's my error. Uh, so I got a great shave from this guy. A few hairs in my trouble spot that um, had some length, some visible length to them, but it's not a big deal at all. And I, I didn't even actually try in this shave to kind of attack that with my optimum set of angles. I was just kind of being casual, and it still got a good cut. So to me, this uh, Mamba is an excellent buy. You can get them new, I think, 50 or $60.00. Um, and uh, even this mild one, I get really good good shaves from it. If you have one of these and you're not getting good shaves, <clears throat> experiment with your angle. Obviously, you can try different blades, but uh, experiment with your handle angle because with milder razors, that's often the key. By mild razor, by nature, has that blade edge in a safer place, a more protected place than out as much with an aggressive razor. Aggressive razors, often it's easy to find the angle because there's a wide range of acceptable angles that you can use. A mild razor has a smaller little window for you to try to find that angle. But if you value smooth shaves, then sometimes it's worth it with like a Gillette Tech. Millions of these things were made. So many guys used them been in play for 40 years. If you can't make a tech work, it's 
probably you and not the tech, to be honest with you. And this is kind of similar in that regard. Uh, so give, the, it's one of those, the old adage, technique over tools. Don't blame the tools. It's probably not their fault, especially when it's a, a time-tested tool, like a, especially like a Gillette Tech. A smooth razor. I'm really happy with this guy. I like him a lot. So over the course of the shave, I used four and a half teaspoons of water to build up the lather. That's where the syringe comes in to let me know how much I used. That way, if I'm trying to get a shortcut to this lather the next time, especially the next time I use this brush with this soap, then that has a lot of value, those numbers. If I use a different brush, those numbers become a little bit more like a guideline. If that brush differs greatly from the previous brush, obviously those numbers becomes a lot more of a, a concept than a guideline even. But if it's similar, then you're gonna, the numbers are gonna be more very, uh, relevant. How much lather do we have left? And look at that viscosity. Look at that collapsing, look at that kind of fluidity and elasticity. That is where you want to get this lather, at least, at least that's where I want to get it. Choose your own way in this, in this regard. But that is just a tremendous, a nice performing lather right there. Creaminess, luxurious feel, but slick on the face. It's a perfect combo. How much lather do I have left? I did four passes. And this definitely looks like two passes of lather. So we'll say we just made enough lather for six passes. I'm starting to track the passes now, in addition to just the number of shaves. And so that's cool because I can, instead of uh, previously, I was estimating how many ounces I use, how many grams I use per shave. Well, that would, it's, to me, it's not bad because usually I have four to five passes of lather that I make. And so that's a reasonable thing. But just in case I make way too much, then at the end, I'm, I'm saying how many passes I made. And that's going to be a lot more accurate in terms of uh, looking at how much uh, soap I'm using per shave. And, uh, and that's also v valuable for certain people who may only do two passes per shave. There are some guys who can do that. Maybe they like a really aggressive razor. Their skin is bad. got to be tougher than mine. But they like uh, an aggressive razor, and they have to, and, but they can just, uh, just remove that hair efficiently. With that tough skin, they're able to uh, just do it in two passes, save time and soap, that sort of thing. And so if I say, I got a thousand passes out of this can of tub of sterling, then, uh, then that tells them how many they could get. Me, a four pass shaver versus them, a two pass. Let's talk a little bit about our brushes. This really kind of applies to all of them. Maybe the synthetics a little bit less, but um, especially the animal hair brushes, mold and mildew are not your friend and so you want to try to get these guys pretty dry before you put them away and definitely don't put them away inside of a closed medicine cabinet because they need that uh, moving air to be able to uh, uh, keep clean and so what I do is I hold them about like this dip my hand down in the sink and do this really vigorously to sling that water out then I pull it out and at that point, it's not really dripping anymore, so we've removed a lot of water. And then I take it over to the towel, and I just kind of strop it up and down, turn it 90 degrees, so that I'm kind of increasing the splay at, you know, proper angles all the way around, you know. And then, so that's starting to remove more and more water from the, the kind of the top 50% of the bristles. And then that's about what you can do. Um, there you go. So this is how this guy splays after this uh, stropping. And it looks like, yeah, we definitely have some splitting of hairs. So that's pretty neat. Like I said, oh yeah, there's one right there. Let's see if I can 
Oh yeah, there. Right there we're on my goatee. So he is uh, nicely split. And as you can see there, those split ends are very fine. And so that's that softness. And it's just going to get better and better with use. Now, if you start with a brush with low backbone, the same splitting is going to happen. But if the backbone doesn't keep that splitting on your face, if it lets it open up and stay floppy, then I think some people don't like that as much, and maybe I don't either. And so maybe that's why this backbone here of this guy is important. Um, he's going to keep those soft tips on your face to where you can feel them. Pole Silver did great in this razor. I didn't even work on this area very hard at all, and I got a nice cut. So even an old Pole Silver by many people's definitions. Let me make sure I said 21. Yeah, so today is the 22nd use of this blade a good one and also pole silvers are expensive to get right now um, i don't know if that's going to change but when all of a sudden you can get 20 uses out of a pole silver instead of two then it doesn't really matter if they balloon in price see it's kind of cool even if the pole silver ballooned up to a dollar a blade which is nuts it's nowhere near that right now, but I'm getting 21 shaves, 22 now, so that's better than a nickel a shave. It's still pretty cheap. Now it's time to splash on a little bit of splash. Give it a shake because this guy doesn't contain just alcohol and fragrance. Got some good stuff for you in there, too. It's funny. I get a nice, comfortable shave with that 220-use Nasset. doesn't sting nearly this much. Mine are stinging, though, right now, but at a lot more places. Nasset's just smooth. I wanted to show you guys about the uh, Mamba head here. There are several razors that are employing a different style than has been used in the past regarding a three-piece razor. The old type and many others have had pins attached to the underside of the top cap here that then come through the bottom, and those keep the blade aligned. Well, as you can see with this Mamba, there are no pins coming through the top because what they've done is I take the top cap off you can see that you actually have holes in the top cap instead of pins the pins are actually rather short and they are in the bottom plate the base plate so it's a little pro more problematic to put the blade on here and then sometimes you might nudge it loose, you know, by putting the top cap on. And so it's a little less sure than the other style, but you get used to it pretty easy. You know what I actually did today? I put the razor on the top cap first and then decided to just put the base plate on and just see if it would line up naturally. And it kind of did. It was a lot easier than the other way around. Now the Mamba does do a pretty good job of extending over the end tabs of the razor blade. And so for you guys who get injured because of those end tabs, I've never had a problem with it. Um, this may be a good razor for you. And there's my pole silver blade. So I just wanted to show you these posts here. And here's the underside of the blade. View from the side. A nice, well-made piece of machinery. This is a stainless steel head, and this particular handle is titanium. 
last uh, multiple lifetimes with any reasonably good care. And I like to dry my pieces off and I'll put my uh, pulse over blade away in my little envelope. And we're looking good here. Well, excellent shave. Face feels great. That stinging didn't last very long with the aftershave. Oh, nice, nice. Almost baby butt smooth without even having to go against the grain on my cheeks here. Neck looks great. I mean, yeah, a couple little hairs, but don't worry about it. All right. Thank you for watching. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. I hope there's been something here that's been good for you. You take care. Good night.